Hey everybody, Jason here again with the GDT Basics video question line. Today's topic is how do you measure a threaded hole? The question that was submitted is I have a question about using a threaded hole location gauge to inspect true position of a threaded hole. When we use a thread hole location gauge to get the pitch cylinder diameter of the thread, in other words, the derived center of that thread, do we need to take the measured feature down into the threaded hole or keep it above as a projected feature to inspect? So this is a great conversation that brings up a couple of uh, things we need to consider, not only on the design side, but also on the inspection side. So a couple of the pictures submitted from the student here are actual pictures during the measurement process that we got. So we have this threaded hole location gauge. So there's a lot of different variations of these sort of gauges, but the essence of the gauge is it's got the male thread if you're trying to inspect a female threaded location. Uh, so you thread that in there and there's this little cylinder that sits above that surface. And what you would do is you would actually come in with a CMM or inspection equipment and measure where that cylinder is at. So you're not actually measuring the threads themselves, but rather this tool that is also attached to the threads that you threaded into the hole. And if anyone knows the ASME Y14.5, they say the default axis that you need to measure when checking the location of a threaded feature is the axis of the pitch cylinder diameter. And really, you know, the only way to capture the axis of that pitch cylinder diameter and not the axis of the major or minor diameters for that thread is to use a gauge like this. Because whenever you thread something into those threads and you put tension on them, they'll center themselves up on the pitch cylinder diameter. Nothing actually ever touches the surface of the major or minor diameter when you thread features into themselves, right? So uh, that's the whole reason we use these thread gauges. Uh, that's a great place to start. It does actually assess the axis of the pitch cylinder diameter. And as you can see here, in this step, it creates a cylinder from those points of that inspection. And it can create an axis from those points. And that axis exists up here because you took points above the threaded feature, right? You took the actual measurement on the gauge itself. And then we get the axis up here. And you can assess where that axis is relative to the datums. And we can create a measured diametric deviation for that axis. Now, the question is, is this appropriate? And there's a big depends, right? There's a big, uh, it depends on the specifications of the drawing. It depends on what the design intent was. It depends on what your inspection process looks like. Now, there's a couple of things that I can give you as a hard rule to follow. And that centers itself around the projection symbol that may or may not be on the drawing. And so let's take a look at this example part here. Uh, we have a quick screenshot from the drawing. Uh, again, obviously, this is not a complete drawing. But what we see here is we have five threaded features. And they have a position to A and B diametrically of 20 thousands. So we have a 1032 uh, threaded feature here, and the depth of those holes is 0 0.380. And we can see that we have this red part, and there's a green collar that gets bolted into this little slot here, right? So there's a green collar that's got some clearance holes, um, and so we want to make sure a fastener fits through that location. Now, this position feature control frame, uh, as we show here, ensures that the axis of the threaded hole stays within a diametric tolerance zone that's located in the datum reference frame. So we see here this red axis is the axis of the pitch cylinder diameter of the threaded feature. And that axis has to be inside the diametric tolerance zone of 20 thousandths. So if it does move inside this tolerance zone, we can see that it's going to shift and has it have a maximum displacement. So it can go up or it can go down and it can even tip out of orientation. But what's interesting is when we thread this fastener in here, that fastener will also be inside that tolerance zone. So we're going to see that the axis of that fastener is following and everything's good. Everything would appear as it's going to clear that mating hole if we did our tolerance calculations correctly. What's interesting, though, is if there's any sort of orientation of this axis, something interesting happens to the fastener. The axis of that fastener keeps going, right? It keeps extending outward. And what might happen is you'll have an interference between the fastener and that clearance hole. So if there's any orientation error, that axis could be projected well beyond this tolerance zone and we'd still pass because the specification and the rules say it's just the axis of the threads, the female threads that we see here. 
It's not the axis as it were to project above this red surface here. But the fastener and the way it acts is definitely something we probably care about. And if that's the case, we want to make sure that we include projection in this specification for this control. If we would like to control that portion of the axis, we can simply use the projection tolerance modifier. So we still have the same tolerance zone, and we make sure that we're projecting the axis above the surface a certain value. Now, if you're selecting this value, this value is often the depth of the clearance hole because you want to make sure that this amount of the axis projected above this surface by this distance is going to be within our tolerance zone. And that's the axis we care about. And in fact, we don't even care if the axis projection as it's inside this surface, right, uh, is outside that tolerance zone because this axis down here could be way out of this tolerance zone but still function once we do thread things in. So at the end of the day, what we really do care about for threaded features is the axis or the location of the fastener projected above that surface. So we can see these kind of compared side by side. If we have the projection symbol, we're supposed to control the axis of this feature as it's projected above the surface. So here's the axis. And if we don't see the projection symbol, we're supposed to check the axis of the pitch cylinder diameter and have it be inside the material. So in the inspection process, if you measure this axis here and you have this specification on the drawing, technically to be accurate to the standard, you're supposed to project it back into the material. And if you see this on your drawing and you measure this axis, and again, assuming your gauge sits above that value and you measure the axis of the cylinder here, you are already measuring that axis projected above the surface. Just make sure that your measurement is at least this far above that surface to make sure you've met that specification. If not, you might actually have to project the axis out even more. So a lot of times in the real world, we don't see this symbol on drawings which is unfortunate because it's the most practical or more, most functional specification to put on a drawing for uh, threaded features that have a clearance hole and a fastener trying to fit through them. If you don't do this and you measure the axis of the projection, right? If you don't, if you have this on your drawing and you're measuring this axis, you're probably doing the designer a favor because they didn't realize this was a thing. And this really is, at the end of the day, the, probably the most functional assessment of if that threaded feature is going to be good or not. But if you don't see the projection symbol on here to be technically to the standard, you should project that axis back in. So now you have all the tools, you have all the variables, you can make a decision for yourself. Uh, if it were me up to inspecting my own part that I designed and I forgot to put the projection symbol on there, I would definitely leave the axis above that surface. It's just the most functional. Uh, it's just a little bit more conservative in my measurement, measurements, making sure it's a good functional feature. Um, just know that there are rules to follow within the standard. Projection means we need to project the axis above. No projection means we should not project the axis above. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of backstory to make a decision for yourself and to navigate this issue in the future, uh, whether you're a designer or you're an inspector. So thanks for submitting. Have a great day. Our goal is to be your best source for gd and information online. It's important to us that everyone involved in engineering and manufacturing have the chance to learn and better understand gd and on your prints. We have many free resources to help you get started on your learning journey. Subscribe to our gd and community using the link in the description below or visit our website. Test your knowledge with our gd and and print reading quizzes. Download helpful charts and access articles